Hey, it's Adam here and you're watching The Culture Hack, where we're talking about how to create engaged workspaces that unlock the potential of your teams and drive your business forward in ways you've never seen. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome to The Culture Hack. Today, I have Nancy Boisvert. She is the founder of Agape Marketing and Consulting and Next Steps, and she's got a really interesting niche to talk about. So welcome, Nancy. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much, Adam, for inviting me. This is uh, uh, quite exciting for me to be part of your culture hack here. Awesome. Uh, excellent. Um, but first first and foremost, before we get into it, tell us a little bit about Agape Marketing Consulting and then, of course, Next Steps. Sure. Um, I started working on my own, Adam, way back before there was internet and video casts and podcasts and things like that back in 1984. Uh, I started working in the public relations, uh, marketing, and business consultation fields, and I've done that primarily ever since 1984, uh, with a couple little forays here and there. Um, but over the course of the last six and a half years, I've been managing the affairs for a longtime friend of mine who has uh, Alzheimer's, and uh, I became her her power of attorney. Um, I'm named as her executor. There's, you know, all these legal documents, and and in managing my friend's affairs, it became very evident that to, to structure things so that you have a proper aging plan in in place is is much more complex than just simply naming your oldest child or your best friend as power of attorney. There's a lot of, uh, I, I I like to say it's kind of the tip of the iceberg just to get those components in place because. What is beneath the surface is something that people can't be prepared for. I've spent literally thousands of hours over this last six and a half years maneuvering and navigating through all kinds of minutia and, and issues, legal issues, uh, property issues that you can only come up and learn about as a learned experience. So next steps, seemed to be the natural thing to do would be to set up a consultation uh, opportunity for me to meet with individuals and families of people and make sure that they do have a very robust yet agile aging plan in place. Okay, no, that's, that's very interesting. We always talk about uh, in terms of engagement in the, in the workforce, it used to be that you were just a work unit and whatever else was outside of work was irrelevant. But now that's that has evolved. We're looking at people now as their whole self. So what's going on in their lives outside of work affects how they behave and are able to function at work. And this is highly relevant. As you and I discussed, there's an aging workforce happening. Um, how do you foresee this um, service that you're offering playing out uh, in the workforce? and? in the future? Well, I think that, you know, you make a very valid point there about the fact that what people do in their in their social hours versus their business hours has a major effect on, on what they can bring forward to the workforce. So we do have an aging population. We've got the boomers who are already in the midst of, of, of that aging population. The millennials uh, actually are a slightly bigger bulge than the baby boomers, which was news to me. I didn't know that fact until we were I here. didn't know that either. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So we've got we've got a lot of people who are going to require a lot of help and a lot of support. And as a culture, we don't have that. We don't have enough facilities to take care of people. We don't have enough trained individuals uh, to to assist with this. So we have to look at how we're going to help people with this aging plan. And uh, on, on my website, on my blog post, I actually do have uh, a, a piece on there, thanks to the University of Alberta, some of the data that they had researched. And they call it the unpaid caregivers hours. Um, I don't have those figures in front of me right now, but what they're doing as unpaid caregivers, they're talking about friends and family who help aging individuals. And the the number of people who are doing that and the amount of value, dollar value, is in the billions of dollars across this country. And that's only getting worse. So back to your point about 
how it affects people in the workplace. If you're focused on your aging parents and one of them had a stroke or some kind of an issue, you're not you're going to be focused subconsciously on that while you're in your in your job. So to be better prepared to make sure that you can have things in place, it's not going to resolve the emotional attachment to what happens, but at least you know that the practicalities of their care are being managed if you have a proper plan in place. That's that's really interesting. You know, it's something that um, you don't think about until you're there, and then and all of a sudden you have this thing to worry about. So. You know, companies looking to add extra value to their team members as they get to the stage of their life uh, could be a, an extra benefit that they could offer, or education around it, or you know, something of that Absolutely. nature. They could have me come in and do a workshop for for their employees, uh, just to try to uh, try to give them some general advice, and then if people mm-hmm. wanted to drill down with their individual. Um, their, their own individual issues that are that are obviously unique to their family and their and their dynamic. Uh, you know, I could always meet with them one on one. But you know, there's I, I find that a lot of times people know that they need to do this, but it's kind of like putting together your will or buying life insurance. People know that they should, but mm-hmm. they procrastinate doing it. I don't know if subconsciously we all think that it means we're going to die if we do it, but. but right. uh, yeah, but I, I can tell you, you know, it, from the thousands of hours that I've spent, if I had known all of this information that I know now before I went into it, it would have saved me at least half of that time. Right. So how do you how do you address people who are procrastinating on this? They're like, oh, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about, you know, that stage of my life. Like, um, you know, are there, there are some obstacles to overcome there. Yeah, absolutely. I. I I, I kept banging my head against that wall for about the first seven or eight months that I, I decided to create next steps. Um, so I decided that maybe it made sense to go to people who can provide it for their clients as a value add. So mm-hmm. financial professionals are, are a natural fit for this. They, they are dealing obviously with retirement plans and making sure people have enough money to do them in their old age. and and manage their affairs with life insurance and making sure they're okay if they're sick. So I'm looking to partner, I've I've partnered with a couple already, I'm looking to partner with a handful of financial professionals who see this as a value add for their clients. And they essentially um, contract to me, uh, to Next Steps, uh, to provide this consultation to their clients, which is provided to their clients for for, for free. Um, also, as you point out, there's a lot of opportunity here for businesses to bring me in and, and, and do workshops or um, potentially even provide that as, as a benefit to their employees. Okay, very interesting. So it's very, very relevant example of there is no one size fits all when you're looking at as, an, as a business owner or a, a leader to look out for your employees as people there's all sorts of different dimensions age just being one of them um, right. so that's that's really interesting uh, I kind of opened my eyes I hadn't thought about this uh, <laughs> at all really um, <laughs> thank, thank you so much Nancy I really appreciate your point of view and it was great uh, great chatting with you oh thank you for allowing me to share this Adam Thank you very much and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching The Culture Hack. Do you want to chat culture and engagement? Give us a call and come on the show.